No love, old love, both. This will be an all signs tarot reading. It's timeless. Starting with Aries, as always, timestamps will be provided. Man, these are hard to shuffle. A newish deck it was packed away in storage in the garage. I've not used this deck in what feels like a million years. Six cards for Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising. God damn. Excuse me. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising. Venus, Mars. Damn, that's sloppy. Six cards for Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. What is going on with Aries? Oh my God. Uno Mas. King of Pentacles. The High Priestess. Strength. Will of Fortune. Queen of Pentacles. And Seven of Pentacles. I'm seeing a lot of time. I'm seeing a lot of delay. I'm seeing a lot of resistance. And it's very likely this is someone you've had a few cycles with. This could be an on again, off again. Roller coaster from hell. Extreme highs, extreme lows. You see this person as your equal. You definitely have things in common, shared beliefs, shared interests, so it's not just a sexual attraction. What dominates? Um, we got fire, Will of Fortune, Sagittarius, Queen of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, so fire, earth, strength, Leo, the High Priestess, Cancer, King of Pentacles, earth. So all of this fire and earth, and just the one water card, the High Priestess, Cancer, Fire and earth, that's the lustiest combination. So there is a lot of lust, but you have things in common. Um, I'm not sure why this is not coming together in the so-called 3D. Could it be third party? They could be married to someone else. You could be married to someone else. It could be multiple party. Please provide an energetic summation for... Aries, but this is not new love. This is old love. An energetic summation for Aries, traditional cards, Trace Moss, Por Favor. Five of Pentacles. Three of Wands. You may regard this person as the best lover of your life. Prince of Pentacles. But I see a lot of bread crumbing. It looks like this person is half-assing this relationship. They're not making you top priority. And you can accept that or not. I don't feel like you have the same love language. Um, your love language could be warmth, affection, showing affection, showing love physically with, you know, being held, cuddling, hand holding, all of that. And this person's love language could be acts of service. I feel like this person is really dry, really stoic, really self-contained. What you see is what you get with this person. They're not that exciting. They're not that charismatic. A lot of people would dismiss this person as boring, but you love them 
and you want this to work. Maybe it will eventually, but right now, it looks like you're putting in a lot more effort than this person. So if it resonates at all, my strong suggestion would be take your hands off the wheel. You don't have to prove anything to this person. They know you by now. They know who you are. They know what you want. They know what your expectations are. You're not auditioning. So if it resonates, I would, I would let go. I wouldn't reach out to this person. And I wouldn't expect things to change because I see them pretty much staying the way they are. I'm not seeing some big change anytime soon. So that's what I have for Aries. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. K Paso, Taurus, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, Old Love, New Love, Oath. Six cards for Taurus. Uno Mas. Sloppy as hell. Man, this is a hard deck to shuffle. I bought this in a shop in one of the malls in San Antonio months ago, years ago maybe. It was packed away in storage. I've not really used it. Six cards for Taurus. New love, old love, both. That's good. That's decent. I may change decks at some point before I get to Pisces. The Emperor. Dan, Ten of Cups. Five of Cups. The Fool. Six of Pentacles. Judgment. This reads newish to me. There are two different things that I'm seeing here. Usually I stick to just one narrative and I just let it go. I let it ride, whatever. It's gonna resonate with someone who watches. Reading for a global audience. The views aren't that great at this channel. I'm trying to get monetized. It feels like I'm trudging up a mountain and I don't have the right shoes for it. But anyway, um, two different things come to mind looking at these cards. Either this is someone old, someone you've been fucking with for a while. They're married to someone else. It's third party. And I don't know. Um, there's mutuality, but there are complications. So either that or this is someone new that you could potentially co-create something like the Ten of Cups with, marriage. Um, if this is someone new, what I'm getting from these cards is that you're going to have to really release someone from your past. There could be someone you have a very complicated history with, on again, off again, and on some level, you're hoping they'll come back and you're hoping the two of you can repair the damage and start fresh, okay? So if that's the case, if you're holding on to someone from your past, an ex, these cards are saying, let the ex go so you can clear space and welcome in this new person. And if it's third party, if this person is with someone else, these cards are saying, get out of this energy of the fool because your needs are not being met. You're not serving your highest good by staying in this connection. Um, people are judging you. You're judging yourself. You know you could do better. So if it's new, if it's someone new, uh, you want to 
Embrace that energy that's in the first row, the Emperor Aries over the full Aquarius. You want to be confident. You want to be optimistic. You want to be open because this new person may not be your usual type, but they're going to be a really good energetic fit. Um, there's going to be amazing sex and it's going to be spiritual, meaning you understand each other, you're tender and sweet with each other, you speak the same love language. So you got a grab bag of things to pick from there, Taurus. Hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is in the description box below, as they say. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Hey, Paso Gemini, this is your season. Timeless reading, but as I record this, we're in Gemini season. Coming up on the full moon in Sagittarius, I don't know the exact date. Six cards for Gemini, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Not the best deck for shuffling. Seven of Swords, Six of Swords, King of Swords, <laughs> Synchronicity, that top row is all air, and then we have the Four of Wands, so it's all masculine so far, air and fire. Two of Cups, spoke too soon. King of Wands. So I'm seeing a relationship. This is probably owed. This is someone you're already fucking with. This person is already in your phone. Yeah, this person's in your phone, okay? And it looks like the two of you are going to marry each other eventually. There are some things to work out. This could be long distance. Um, I see mutuality. You both prioritize this relationship. You both want the same thing. Seven of Seven of Swords is sticking out. I'm picking up Sabotage. Your doubts and fears and insecurities from previous relationships, those could work against this. You could sabotage this relationship. If you're mistrustful, if you have trust issues, um, if you're always wondering if this person's talking to someone else, if it's long distance and you're on social media a lot, that can be a huge mindfuck. I know that can be a huge mindfuck. If you have trust issues and it's long distance and you're watching this person on Instagram, for instance, um, you can create this paranoia, you know. Well, why did that person leave a comment on that? What did they mean by that? What do those emojis mean? You can overthink. That's Mercury. Gemini's ruled by Mercury. And I can relate to the Mercury energy because Mercury is my chart ruler. I've got Virgo rising and a Virgo moon and my son of Venus and Aquarius are in the sixth house. It's taken me decades to get over the overthinking and I'm still not really over it. I can't really do relationships so I'm in a platonic partnership and that works for us. We're raising our son together but uh, I had a brief thing, very brief, uh, 
2021 Instagram, there was triangulation with this guy that I was talking to. He brought in another person and I said, okay, I can't, I can't with social media. So there could be, let's see, I was going to say there could be a bit of an age gap and yeah, there could, but these are two kinks. So you're probably about the same age. You have the air energy. This person has the fire energy. You complement each other. You're a really good energetic fit. Sex is amazing. Um, you regard this person as an intellectual equal. Maybe you like the same books, the same music, the same art. Um, this person makes you laugh. You're really into this person. And I do see mutuality because we have two of cups. So don't sabotage. That's what I have for Gemini. Hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Okay, Paso, Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Six cards for Cancer. New love, old love, both. Princess of Cups. The High Priestess, there you are. Prince of Wands. Five of Wands. The Hermit. Seven of Wands. Okay, you're not trying to get into a relationship right now. Um, you could be on social media talking to a few different people, just keeping it very light, flirtatious, fun, but you're not trying to get into a relationship. Just going by these cards. Reading for a global audience. It's not a personal reading. It's either your story or no, not at all. But I mean, with the Hermit and Seven of Wands, that's a lot of resistance. I mean, that bottom row, damn, five of wands, the hermit, seven of wands. feel like it's overused. It's a cliche. It's said again and again at all these tarot channels, but you're healing right now. You could be trying to get over someone who really did a number on you, someone who just zapped you. They zapped your energy. They made you feel like... Um, it's, it's brutal out there. It really is. And so you're just taking care of yourself. You're um, focused on your spiritual path, according to these cards. You're not trying to start anything new with anyone. Um, out of the few different people that you're talking to, there may be one who captures your attention more than others. Um this person could be a few years younger than you. They have this really strong, dynamic sexual energy. And there's definitely a strong sexual attraction, but you're just, you're playing it loose. Uh, you're in no rush to get into a relationship, according to these cards. So that's what I see for cancer. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Okay, Paso Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Six cards for Leo. New love, old love, both. Five of Swords, the Hanged Man, 
Four of Swords, Seven of Cups, Nine of Wands, King of Cups. Okay, this is very similar to what I saw for Cancer. It could be that you're healing from a relationship or relationships that didn't go that well, and you're not trying to get close to anyone right now. You're just sitting back, taking care of your spiritual hygiene. You're breathing in and out. You're meditating. You're fondling crystals. Um, you could be going for a Reiki certification. You could be taking a manifestation course. You could be... Um, talking to a manifestation coach, but you're in no rush to get into a relationship. There could be someone you have a crush on, but you don't really feel like this is gonna go anywhere. This is not gonna turn into anything because there's not, much, there's not that much communication and the two of you don't have that much in common. It's just, it could be someone on Instagram who caught your eye. Um, so a crush, they could have strong Pisces in their chart, but you're not trying to get close to anyone. I don't see new love or old love coming in anytime soon for Leo. That's what I have. I hope it helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. I'm just zooming through these. We're at almost 22 minutes. K Paso, Virgo, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, six parts for Virgo. New love, old love, both. These are the hardest damn cards to shuffle. Ouch. Three of Swords. Death. The Star. Four of Pentacles. King of Swords. Could be dealing with someone who has strong Aquarius in their natal chart. Aquarius and Scorpio. Four of Wands. Looks like third party. Looks like you're dealing with someone who is in a committed relationship. You met maybe on social media. Maybe that's mostly how you communicate is on social media through direct messages. You're super attached to this person. This reads really masochistic to me. Strong Aquarius energy, because we have two fours. Four is the number of Aquarius, and we have a star, Aquarius, death, Scorpio. Um, this person is avoidant. Well, they can only give you so much if they're married, if they're with someone else. You, you can't really have expectations, and that's how it is. You know, when you're an adult and you make the conscious decision, and I've heard the cliche a million times before, I've used it myself, the heart wants what the heart wants. You're an adult, you make the conscious decision to get involved with someone who is with someone else. Um, and I've said this before, I mean, how many barriers do you want to create so they can be with someone else, so it's third party? It could be multiple party, you could be with someone as well. I've seen that numerous times with clients. Um, multiple party. So if you have third party, multiple party, you're with someone else, you're with someone else, and there's distance, how much bullshit do you need? I mean, how far do you want it to be? And when we do that, I've done it myself numerous times, we create these weird, awkward, uncomfortable, not gratifying at all situations. Um, that's because on some level, we don't want to be in a relationship. If we want it to be that hard, well then clearly, we don't want to be in a Ten of Cups, Four of Wands kind of relationship. Um, 
You can say, oh, no one else makes me feel like this person. There's no one else out there. We connect on so many levels. You could be in that whole twin flame thing where you think this is runner chaser and the person's just not really showing up the way you want them to show up. And there's that whole rabbit hole you can go down. It's popular. These people have a lot more subscribers and apparently a lot more money than I do. These manifestation coaches who will help you with their videos at YouTube and then you can go the extra mile and pay for coaching. They will help you manifest an SP using affirmations. So maybe you're wanting to manifest marriage with this person. Maybe you're in a relationship that you're miserable and you feel like this other person, this person you're fixated on, they have the missing key. This is the person you're supposed to be with. So you could be delusional. How hard do you want it to be? I don't see the satisfaction. Um, maybe you and this person will get together eventually and you'll create the Four of Wands together, but it's going to be a long, hard, bumpy road according to these cards. Please provide an energetic summation for Virgo. Three additional cards. That's what I bring to the tarot table. More than anything, I bring a lifetime of experience. 50 years old, and I've had all kinds of relationships. Nine of Wands, so you've been in this for a while. So yeah, it's, it's not new love, it's old love. Seven of Cups, you have this person on a pedestal. You're looking at this person through rose-colored glasses. There's a lot of projection, a lot of fantasy. The Tower. Okay. What has to happen for you to extricate yourself from this? What do you want your Tower moment? What do you want your rock bottom to be? How far down to the depths of hell do you want to go? Only you can decide that. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Hey, Paso, Libra, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, six cards for Libra, New Love, Old Love, both. Three of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, Eight of Pentacles. It's safe to say this is old and crusty. Two of Cups. There's some sweetness. Ace of Swords. The nice you would think, oh, someone new. No. You probably had a few cycles with this person, but this is someone you've known for years. Queen of Cups. Okay. So you're in love with this person. You think of them incessantly. You may have lived together at some point. You may have shared a home, shared resources. You may have been you may have been engaged. Maybe you caught off the engagement. Uh, You've invested in this. The other person has invested as well. And there is love here. And you do have things in common. I didn't do this for the other signs, but I've got to do this. Please clarify Nine of Swords over Ace of Swords, one card. Prince of Wands. This person has sexual issues. I don't know what those sexual issues are, but they definitely have sexual issues, and that's creating some kind of block between the two of you. 
One possible thing that comes immediately to mind, uh, this person could be in the closet. Maybe you're gay and this person's gay, but they're not owning that. They're, they're staying in something heterosexual because of culture, because of society, because of any number of reasons. They're not coming out of the closet. They're not embracing their sexuality. They've got these hangups. Something's holding them back. Um, and this person could be working through an addiction. They could have a diagnosis or diagnoses, see PTSD, major depression, anxiety. They're working through something. And their mess is becoming your mess because you love them. So to be crude, to be crass, it's probably not the best sex of your life. I see sexual problems here. Uh, but you love this person. You feel like this is your person. You feel linked. Okay. And you're willing to put up with a lot because you do love them so much. So this is someone you've been in a connection with for years. I don't have any advice. Um, other than that, if this resonates, I would say be very clear with your boundaries, which that's not easy for Libra. Libra invites everyone in and you let people stomp the mud from their boots all over your clean linoleum. Libra has that in common with Pisces, I would say. So that's what I see, that's what I have. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in the Shimmery description box. Thanks so much for watching, peace out. K plus so Scorpio, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Six cards for Scorpio, New Love, Old Love, both, but we're at over 30 minutes now. Four of Cups, Four of Wands, Ten of Cups, so we have the Aquarius Leo axis because four is Aquarius 10, one Leo the sun. Strength, Leo. The star, Aquarius. Synchronicity is thick for Scorpio. Temperate Sagittarius. Okay. This is old. This is someone you have known for years. And it could be third party, that's always a possibility. We have the two marriage cards, but I'm not going to take this reading in that direction. I'm going to take it in this direction. Okay, this is someone that you could potentially create a life with. You could marry this person. Um, the problem is codependency. And it's common, it's a human experience. I'm absolutely codependent. I was codependent in all of my relationships. It's taken me years to unpack what I've unpacked so far, and there's more unpacking to do, but I am definitely chronically codependent. So, um, it's hard to even really talk about it because it is so common. But I feel like if you're in that place where you're thinking that um, marriage to this person is going to solve all your problems, you know, if the two of you could just get closer and get married tomorrow and have a two-week honeymoon in Fiji, everything would just fall into place and be beautiful. It's a cliche. It's true. It all starts with you. It begins and ends with you, with each of us. We have to craft 
our own lives. We have to create our own happiness. We have to find the best cards in the deck in ourselves before we can find those cards with someone else. So maybe ask yourself, what does the Ten of Cups mean to you? What does the Four of Wands mean to you? What does the ideal relationship mean? What do you require? What are your expectations? It's okay to have expectations, but you got to be realistic. All those videos on how to manifest an SP, I don't know. I, I don't really think those are that valuable. Um, what is valuable is the knowledge that we're all going through this life alone. It's a hero's journey. We are going to meet people along the way who aid and abet us on our quest, on our track through this life. There are going to be people who trigger us, people who harm us, um, people we should avoid, but we don't. We see the red flags, we ignore them. Um, but at some point, you just, you got to feel good in your skin and you got to be okay with your own company. So I talk about my life a lot because why not? I'm sitting here staring at my iPhone and I don't know who I'm talking to. Uh, I'm lucky if I get a hundred views on these readings. You know, I, I don't get the views of this channel that I get at Siren Tayro. I've been trying for years to build this channel up to get it monetized and not giving up, but damn, it's, it's ridiculously hard. So I drew a line in the sand in November, 2016. I was going to get married to a man that I love deeply. We were on again, off again, beginning December, 2013 to November, 2016. We were going to get married. Um, I walked away from him, not because I didn't love him, but because I loved myself more. I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't share a bed with a man who is just half-assing it, who's still stuck on women from his past. And I'm like a damn consolation prize. I'm not getting his best. Someone else already got his best. And I'm getting a man who is aging. Uh, he's avoidant. I've told him what my love language is. I've told him how important it is that I'm held, that when we're out, that he holds my hand, but you can't force someone to speak your damn love language. My love language is physical affection, warmth, um, touch, and his love language is acts of service, I guess. Anyway, I walked away still loving him, um, But, oh, trying to be cohesive and coherent and, and all of that. Uh, when I walked away in 2016, I decided to move in with my ex-husband in this beautiful brick home in this gated subdivision in San Antonio. I decided to move into the guest bedroom, be in a platonic partnership with my ex and help him raise our son. I was tired of seeing my son on weekends. I had this crappy little studio apartment in the medical center of San Antonio when I was going to UTSA to get my English degree in my middle age. I wanted to see my son all the time. And I was just, I was tired of trying to make it in San Antonio on my own. I hate driving. I don't handle stress that well. I was on disability for years for anxiety and depression. I haven't been on disability in the last two years, I guess. I've just been making money with the cards, with client readings and Google AdSense, the very little bit that I can Google AdSense. Anyway, so what I've learned about myself is that yes, I am codependent. 
We were living with family temporarily. The ex and my son are still there in this small town in East Texas. The house didn't sell, so we're back in San Antonio. So I've been alone for two weeks in this house, just unpacking boxes, cleaning, doing the work. Um, and I'm going to be alone for a while. And there are ridiculous things that I should be able to solve on my own, but my autopilot thing is call the ex, you know, the dogs that always bark next door, um, me not getting packages that I expected. And he says, well, go and talk to the postal carrier and you can call the post office. And so just things that are so Mickey Mouse, ABC, one, two, three, simple. But I disabled myself by being so reliant on my ex for just the mundane 3D stuff, you know, because he told me years ago when we'd been married for about a year, July 2006, Albuquerque, New Mexico, I was working as a security guard at this call center in Rio Rancho, and I had a nervous breakdown. There was an emergency call, and it was on me to take care of this because my supervisor and our boss were having this third party thing. They were both married to other people, but they had their thing, and they were going around the parking lot and maybe having sex in a parked car or hell, I don't know. So I had a nervous breakdown, and the ex told me, you don't have to work. I'll support you. You're a great writer. You're a great artist. I know that someday you're going to make tons of money with your writing and your art. I'm 50, and I'm still trudging up a mountain in the wrong shoes. So... I haven't manifested the life of my dreams. I'm codependent and I've got all kinds of blocks, blockages. And people can say, oh, you shouldn't be reading tarot then. Sure, I should be reading tarot because I'm human. I'm relatable. I'm grappling with the 3D shit like a lot of other people. I'm not a manifestation coach. I'm not some guru on high. I can't tell you that I'm driving a Mercedes and I'm living in this badass house in Hawaii. No, I'm in the shit like a lot of people. And so I absolutely should be reading tarot. Please provide an energetic summation for Scorpio. Three additional cards. Trace Moss 454. Nine of Wands. The Hanged Man. Five of Cups. Who took your cups away? Who spilled your cups? Who made you feel like you're not worthy of the best fucking romantic sexual relationship you can imagine? Who told you that you're not good enough? Someone told you that, you believe them, and you've been telling yourself that ever since. Well, I can't expect too much because this thing is wrong with me, X, Y, Z. Going back to my life again. So I talked about it in the community section at Siren Tayro a couple of days ago. It's paragraphs, and people don't want to see that. People want to see the memes. They want to see the cliches. It's always darkest before the dawn. You know, they don't want to read multiple paragraphs in the community section, apparently, because I don't get any interaction there. I get very minimal interaction in the community section. Um, what was I saying? Oh, God, I don't know. Um, back to my life. What about it? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm 50. I turned 50 in February. And I was able to celebrate my birthday with my mom and her husband and my sister and her two kids and my brother and I don't think his wife showed up. She wasn't there. She was somewhere else. But my dad, who's going through his fifth divorce, I was able to spend more time with my dad and I was there for his 70th birthday in April. I was able to spend more time with my dad in those few months than I spent with my dad in my entire life. 
This is a man who was abusive, mostly verbally, but verbally, physically. I mean, if you consider spanking a three-year-old with a leather belt abuse, then yeah, I was abused. Um, so there was that. And yeah, the spankings hurt, but what hurt the most was the hatred that I saw in his eyes. There was that for six years. Then he left me and my mom and my two younger siblings and moved to Louisiana where he got together with the woman who became his second wife. And he rarely paid child support. Um, and I never really knew my dad. I, I knew him as a god. I knew him as a monster. The first man to break my heart. So it was nice these past few months getting close to my dad, getting to know him in his totality, seeing this man. I hear sounds and I just try to get through it. Don't be paranoid. Um, this man, an aging baby boomer, you know, this man who dropped out of high school and worked in the oil field all his life and he built up some money. It's gone now because of all his divorces, but you know, he had this McMansion at one point. He's been on safari a few times, Africa. He had all these mounts hanging around his McMansion. He had all this artwork and this beautiful pool that was landscaped. Anyway, um, he's in a small apartment now in a small town in East Texas. And we bonded over edibles. I'm in Texas. I didn't know you could go into a smoke shop and get THC infused gummies. I had no idea. So we bonded over edibles. We both struggle with depression and anxiety. We bonded over music. Um, I was able to sing in a karaoke bar for him. He didn't sing, he watched me, but that was satisfying for me at the age of 50 to get on stage and, and sing karaoke for my dad. So I sang Ain't Nobody's Business If I Do, Billie Holiday. And I got minimal applause. I was in this redneck bar. Everyone was singing New Country and they were just singing, you know, the cliche things, the things you would, things you would expect to hear in a small town Texas karaoke bar. So I got minimal applause, but my dad hugged me and said, that's your genre. And that felt very satisfying to me. And there was this one point when I was there in the small town where it was crazy how I was manifesting just random stuff. I would just think on something and it would show up. Like, you know, I have these weird random channels where I'm not doing tarot or astrology. I'm just making these artsy little films or my attempt at art films. Anyway, Ebulence Press, my first YouTube channel where I do the little art films and read from various books. Um, I thought it would be so cool if I could just find this certain kind of baby doll. And then I was in the Walmart parking lot one night. We just bought our stuff, go into the car, and I saw that specific kind of doll that I envisioned. It was there with tire tracks on it. And so I took it home and gave it a bubble bath in the um, kitchen sink and made that into a video. It was so cool. So there was that. And then I was just thinking on the ace cups, you know, the chalice, the holy grail, uh, unconditional love, the peace that surpasses all understanding. My dad shows up for, it wasn't Easter, was it? Maybe it was Easter. We were having Easter at my mom's. He shows up, he said he had a gift for me and it was this golden chalice, the Ace of Cups. I have it on my ancestral altar in the den. I have the chalice filled with water, so that's water. And then I've got this Indian warrior, Native American warrior statue he gave me, that's earth. The incense is air and then the little oyster shell with the sage in it, that's fire, so. Um, and we have music in common. The other day I woke up to a text from my dad. He sent me the lyrics to his favorite song of all time. Um, memories of my life, visions of my life. 
I mentioned it in the community section at Siren Tarot by Marmalade. And I said, oh, that reminds, reflections of my life, I don't know. I said, that reminds me of Landslide, a song that always breaks my heart. And so, yes, my father was the first man to break my heart. I could hold on to that for the rest of my life. I could hold on to the trauma of me being three years old and being spanked with his belt. And I was innocent. I, I didn't deserve that spanking. I don't think any three-year-old deserves to be spanked with a leather belt. I could hold on to that. But I've learned how to, um, I guess, neutralize it because before, I mean, as recently as a few nights ago when I had this major purge and I was singing into this this microphone attached to my son's keyboard, I was doing uh, a reading for Siren Tarot that I couldn't do. I couldn't import the video, so I deleted it. Anyway, I was purging and I was thinking on that memory and thinking of my dad and I was crying and there was snot all over my gown. But right now, as I talk about this, I don't have any tears in my eyes and I'm neutral. So maybe I experienced a breakthrough. God, I hope so. It's about time. But that's what I see for Scorpio. I mean, there's tremendous potential here, but don't get stuck in the rut of codependency, feeling like this person is going to just make your life magical in every way. You've got to find the Four of Wands and the Ten of Cups in yourself. Find something that makes you happy, something that blisses you out, that has nothing to do with this person. So, and if you're in the Five of Cups, how do you get out of the Five of Cups? It's different for everyone, and it's not a one and done, okay? I can't say that I've totally released my Capricorn ex and I walked away in 2016. There's still some stuff in there. There's still some gravel in my heart. There's some, some dirt, some residue. I'm not trying to get with anyone. I'm not trying to give my heart out to anyone, maybe ever again. I don't know. Um, but for me, getting out the five, getting out of the five of cups, it was getting into the ace of cups. That's just intense self care. I've been on this spiritual path for years, um, and there's no wind inside. I'm still working the plow. I'm just doing the work each day. Wake up. There are birds singing. I have tea or black coffee. I uh, walk to the mailbox, nothing too fancy, nothing too extravagant. I sing into this microphone. I do the work. I upload videos that get minimal views here at Siren Tayro, Ebulence Press, Chupacabra Cinema, Sky Radio, Cult Yoga. Um, do the occasional client reading and just pimp my own ride. That's how I row. That's what I have for Scorpio. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. K Pasa so Sagittarius. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Six cards for Sagittarius. New love, old love, both. K Pasa, so, what is that? Judgment. The Emperor. Ten of Swords. Quill of Fortune, there you are. King of Wands. Damn, your energy is all over this. And that's good because it's your reading. Three of Wands. I can't make this shit up. Three is the number of Sagittarius. Um, okay, so what the hell's going on here? Okay, you're in love with yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not talking about narcissism or egomania. Uh, you love yourself. And you're essentially, basically holding out for a hero. You're waiting for someone who matches you. You're waiting for your equal. You've ended something with someone 
who was just flaky. The sex wasn't all that. And you just weren't feeling good and you're thinking, oh my God, I can do so much better. You absolutely can. So this is old love, but this has ended. You're not interested in this person anymore. Uh, they come across very cheap to you. You don't respect this person. And I know with Aquarius, maybe it's my stuff in Capricorn and Virgo. Maybe it's all of it combined. I don't know. But when I lose respect for someone, that's curtains. That's ten of swords. That's it. If I can't respect someone, I don't care how good they look in a gym selfie. Um, I don't care how good the sex is. If I can't respect a motherfucker, then I can't, I can't stay with them. So maybe you saw this person in a new light and you lost respect and you ended things. Um, there was something, I mean, this, this is really specific. I mean, it's, it's general, but I don't know. You may have thought this person was tacky, trashy, maybe. They just, they turned you off in some damn way. Um, they might have embarrassed you in public. This person could be dealing with an addiction like alcoholism, and they just, they embarrassed you, and you might have pitied them, but pity is not love. And you just thought, no. Nah, you probably block them on social media. Um, this person seems really toxic to me. They're, they're struggling with something and you're not the one to help them. Okay. You're not the one to help them. Please provide an energetic summation for Sagittarius for cards. Ace of Swords. You're clearing space for the next person, but you've got high expectations. If it can't be Two of Cups, you're not going to fuck with it. You want Two of Cups or nothing. Two of Wands. Okay, I don't want to go there. I, I'm seeing something really specific, but this may trigger people, hurt people. I don't want to trigger. I don't want to hurt, but also I want to keep it real. That's always been a pet, that's always been a pet peeve of mine, an impediment of mine. It's always been a pet peeve. Uh, when someone says, no, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to go there. Tell me, damn it. Sagittarius is like Aquarius in that we are seekers of the truth. And someone can tell us the most terrible thing, but we'd rather have that than someone who's blowing sunshine up our ass. So I'll go ahead and say what I was thinking. Trigger warning, if a trigger warning needs to be issued, um, trigger warning, okay? This person may have been one of those who, and I've been there before, it's been years, but they may have said, if you leave me, I'm going to harm myself or kill myself. And you really felt sorry for this person and you felt responsible in some way and you stayed in it longer than you should have out of pity is what I'm seeing. But you're finally extricating yourself. It's not up to you to keep this person alive on planet Earth. It's not up to you to make this person happy. You can't do that. You can't make anyone happy. Um, so... You're walking away. Uh, you can't help this person. You don't want to be with this person. You're, you're not aligned with this person. You're a lot healthier than they are. And you're a lot more sexual. But sex with Sagittarius, sex with Sagittarius is similar to sex with Aquarius where um, you can be very idealistic and a mature, integrated Sagittarius, same as Aquarius, you want to be with someone that you like, not just someone that you love, someone that you regard as a friend, as an equal. So, yeah, you're walking away from this, and if it's not Two of Cups, then you don't want it. That's what I see Sagittarius. I hope that helps. 
I am always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Peace out. Kpaso Capricorn, Capricorn, Sun and Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, six cards for Capricorn. New love, old love, both. I just need six cards. A lot of resistance, but this is not an easy deck to shuffle. Because I never shuffle it. <laughs> mm. Four of Cups, a lot of this going around. This general ennui, dissatisfaction with life. Life has no flavor, the world, the fixed modality, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus, Leo. Six of Wands. Ace of Wands, someone new. Ace of Pentacles, definitely someone new. Nine of Pentacles. You're going to be alone. You're going to do you until you find someone that you can really fuck with someone um, that you can create something substantial with. Capricorn does not want a relationship they can't sink their teeth into. You're all about the tangible. You're all about quality, okay? Good sex, but with someone you respect. Similar to what I was saying, Sagittarius, uh, and I was saying this about myself. I hear sounds. I'm alone in this house, and it's scary. I'm usually okay, but I'm kind of scared right now. Um, I have Aquarius. Well, I am an Aquarian. I've got Centipedes and Aquarius. So I've got Aquarius in my chart. I've got Mars, Jupiter, North Node, Vertex, and Capricorn. And I've got Virgo rising and a Virgo moon. If I lose respect for someone, I can't be in a relationship. And you're similar. You have to respect the person. You have to feel like this is someone you're actually going places with. Capricorn is the gold digger sign of the zodiac. I'm not saying that you're a gold digger or that you're trying to get someone that has more money than you, but if you and this person do not have goals, if you're not aligned in some way, if you're not working as a team, well then Capricorn's not going to fuck with that. So you want someone that you can really build something with. Um, you are materialistic. You're an earth sign. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You don't want to be with some broke ass. You don't want to be with someone who has no goals, no dreams, no visions. Um, you want someone who's being the best version of themselves, someone who's showing up because you do. You know, you show up, you do the work. Sex is important. If there's not a strong sexual attraction, you're not going to fuck with it. You're not going to settle, period. You're holding out for someone that you can really create something substantial with. And right now, you could be feeling sexual frustration. Well, I've not had sex in six years and I've got a very potent Mars. If your Mars is um, at a degree 10 or less, well then that's potent. And my Mars is exalted because Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So I'm very lusty. I haven't had sex in six years, but I've got a vibrator collection, and I'm not about to get with someone just to have sex. I would rather be alone with vibrators. So you have a strong libido, but you're not signing up for some bullshit. You don't want to be a booty call. That's what I see for Capricorn. So yeah, you're clearing space for this new relationship that's really strong to have the two aces, but you can wait. You know, you're not going to be in something mediocre.
Yeah, that's what I see, that's what I have. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. All the information is included in each and every description box. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Over an hour. <laughs> K Paso, Aquarius, six cards for Aquarius, Aquarius, Sun, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, Old Love, New Love, Boat. Eight of Swords, Prince of Cups, Queen of Swords, there you are, Strength, Princess of Wands, Eight of Wands. Okay, this is, I think this is the first sign that I've said this for. Started with Aries. I see both. I see you being energetically attached to an ex. It's very unlikely you'll hear from this person again. And so there's going to be someone new. Um, this person will probably slide into the DMs if you are on social media. Um, I can see them sending you a direct message of Instagram, for instance, and they're very complimentary. They really like whatever you're putting out there, strong sexual attraction. And this person's probably a few years younger than you. They have strong fire. They have water as well. Possible astral combo for this new person. They could have Sun and Aries, Leo rising, Moon and Gemini. And you may dismiss this person. You think, oh, this is just a thirsty fuck boy. But no, there is some sweetness. There is some potential here. This could turn into something really good. This could become a deeply gratifying romantic sexual relationship. But um, if you're waiting to hear from this person you're still energetically attached to, you got to let that go. It's very unlikely they're going to contact you. you. You finished your cycle with this person. There's nothing more for the two of you to explore and investigate together. So this new person is going to be exciting. The sex is going to be really good. Uh, and it's too soon to tell. I don't, I don't think you've even met this person yet. Or maybe you're just talking, you're just flirting on social media. But um, it could turn into something good eventually. But you got to let this person from the past go. Please provide an energetic summation for Aquarius. Three parts. Eight of Pentacles, King of Cups, Three of Swords. And it could be the person you're still holding on to. Um, they could be married or they could be with someone else. So you can keep the three swords embedded in your heart. You can be masochistic. You can be in this connection that's not really serving your highest good. Or you can pull the swords out and it's gonna hurt. I'm sure it will hurt when you pull three swords out of your heart and examine, okay, what's the root cause? Why am I showing up in my own life this way? Why am I staying in this? Because I'm not benefiting. It's not good. There's no relief. You know, I'm not in bed with this person having amazing sex. They're not holding me. They're not there when the shit comes down and I'm going through X, Y, Z, when I'm bearing a family member, when I'm struggling with something. This person, I can't call on them. 
Why would you stay in this if that's the case? Been there numerous times, as the cliche goes, and I hate it, but the heart wants what the heart wants. Sometimes you have to bitch slap the heart. So if that resonates at all, I would say let this person from your past go and clear space for this new love that could be coming in. That's what I have for Aquarius. I hope that helps. I'm always available for private readings. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out. Kpaso Pisces, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising. Venus, Mars, Mercury. New love, old love, both. Show me the energy for Pisces in six cards. Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, King of Wands, Nine of Cups, Princess of Wands, Eight of Wands. Similar to what I saw for Aquarius, I feel like um, it's both, it's new love and it's old love. The old love is someone you've had a few cycles with. The sex is amazing. Um, this person has Sagittarius in their chart. This person you fucked with before, you've been through a few cycles with this person who has Sagittarius energy, okay? But there's someone new Coming in, it's going to be even better because it's not just about the sex. It's not sex-based. You have sweetness with this person. There's tenderness and there's the potential for it to be really good, really deeply gratifying. So six of pentacles in the first row over nine of cups. What does this mean to you? What does your ideal relationship look like? Six. That's Venus. Nine, that's Mars. So we have the Libra Aries axis. We all have different ideas of what the perfect relationship looks like. For me, um, having Sun and Venus and Aquarius, they both try and Uranus. It's very important to me to be with someone who's not going to crowd my space and someone who is not going to constantly ask me to explain myself. Well, why are you doing that? Why are you wearing a Party City wig and going on YouTube? Why are you shuffling tarot cards? Why are you playing with puppets and Ken dolls and Barbie dolls? Why are you making these weird little short art films? Why are you writing those poems? Why are you writing those books? That's why, even though a lot of people don't understand it, they don't have to, it makes sense to us. That's why I've been in a successful platonic partnership with my Leo ex for years. Yes, I miss having sex. Yes, I miss being in love. But this works for us. We're raising our son together. Uh, we're friends. And my ex gets me like no one else. He's really the best friend and the greatest ally of my life. He supports me. He's supported me for years. I mean, not financially always, but I've been supported these past six years being able to live in this very nice home in the Skate Subdivision in San Antonio. He works the shit jobs doing the mundane work in the 3D, and I've been able to just be this wild child and create like my ass is on fire. I'll be looking for a regular job soon. I have to because I got to get a truck. I got to drive in San Antonio again. But uh, I've been very fortunate. So for me, the Six of Pentacles and Nine of Cups, talking about the ideal romantic sexual relationship. This person gets you. You understand each other. The communication just flows. And, okay, say you're in San Antonio and this person is Vancouver, Bangkok, Tokyo, whatever. It's long distance, either... It's always long distance or they're taking a trip away from you, whatever. You're here, they're there. 
Six of Pentacles over Nine of Cups. It's not going to be the kind of thing where it's not going to be where um, you have that sick feeling in your stomach, wondering what are they up to? Are they talking to someone else? Are they getting well? Try not to be too graphic, too crass. Okay, I'll go there. Are they getting their uh, dick sucked metaphorically on Instagram, Facebook? Whatever, that feeling of unease, that feeling of mistrust. If that's present, well, then it's not Six of Pentacles over Nine of Cups. So you got to have this peaceful feeling knowing that you're giving this person something that no one else is giving them. And it goes so far beyond sex. You're equals. You're this person's ideal. They are your ideal. And you're in sync and it just flows and it's beautiful. And yes, the sex is good, but that's not everything. People are seriously tripping if they think it's all about the sex. Because all I can say is I'm 50 years old. I don't want to talk about my exes too much, but all I can say is I'm 50 years old. I've got a lot of life experience and I know from experience that... The sex only takes you so far. There has to be sweetness and understanding, camaraderie, friendship. But we all have a different idea of what the perfect relationship looks like. So get rid of this other person, as good as the sex was, as much as it was fun, whatever. Let them go and welcome in this new person because you could have a really optimal relationship. But with this King of Wands character, this person of Sagittarius, I'm just seeing cheap thrills. Uh, I'm not seeing someone you have much of anything in common with beyond the sexual attraction. So that's what I have for Pisces. And that concludes this All Signs reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Peace out.